Today we're going to learn about the rectangle. At the top of the page, a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. So a rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. So down below, number one, the properties, well it has all parallelogram properties. Okay, as we just mentioned, it has four right angles. And last, before we mark this in the picture, the diagonals are congruent. Okay, so to mark the picture, to note that has all the parallelogram properties. I'm going to say this pair of opposite sides, these two are parallel and congruent, and these two sides are parallel and congruent. So the arrows note parallel and the number of line segments indicates which sides are congruent. Opposite angles were congruent in parallelogram, and since they're 90, they are congruent. And consecutive angles, so angles right next to each other. This angle and this angle are right next to each other. They are supplementary. 90, 90 is 180. These consecutive angle pairs, so the bottom two add up to 180, and then these two on the left add up to 180. So 90 plus 90 is 180. So opposite angles are congruent and consecutive are supplementary. And the last property of the parallelogram had to do with the diagonals. So let's draw in the diagonals. Remember, the diagonals bisect each other. Well, if they bisect each other and are congruent number three, that means this segment here, one, two, three, from the point of intersection to the other side is going to be congruent. And same with the other one. Because if they're the same measure and you cut them in half, you're going to get the same numbers. So those are all the properties of a rectangle. And now we're going to do some examples. In example number one, it says we have a rectangle PQRS. It says that PS is 220. PS is a side. So let's label that 220. And PR, a diagonal, is 242. We need to find QT. So I'm going to write this sideways. Okay. Find QT, which I'm going to note in green. Well, QT is part of the diagonal. And since the diagonals are congruent, um, it's actually equal to this side. But it's also equal to this and this. So given that this diagonal is 242, we're going to divide that by 2, and we get 121. So that means each piece is 121, each segment of the diagonal. So QT was 242 over 2, which is 121. It's not an angle measure, so I'm not going to include the degree symbol. Okay. Now, using the same picture, okay, for every question, I'm going to erase, and then let's look at number, or part B, rather, they're not numbered. So, if TS is 80, well, if TS is 80, I know this is 80, I know this is 80 in a rectangle, and I know this is 80, because the diagonals are congruent, and they bisect each other, so each half is the same. So if I want to find PR, which goes from here to the other opposite angle, that whole diagonal would be 80 plus 80, which is 160. Still no degrees, because we're not referring to angles. Part C, let's erase. 
Part C says the measure of PRS. So let's trace that. P R. I'm not doing a very good job tracing. And then S, that's this angle right here. PRS is 64 degrees. Find, I'll outline in orange, orange and blue, S Q R. S Q R is right here. Okay, this is my question mark. Well, I know that this is 90 because every uh, angle in a rectangle is um, 90 degrees. So 90 minus 64 would give us 26. So this is 26 degrees. And because in this triangle right here, okay, well, that's hard to see maybe in red, so use this light, I'll use a lighter blue. So this triangle right here, okay? This was congruent to that, each piece of the diagonal. So that creates an isosceles triangle. So if I rotate that around, in the isosceles triangle, if one of the base angles is 26, this angle is 26. So this angle right here is the same as that one. So that's also 26 degrees. So we did 90 minus 64 to get 26 degrees. Number two it says, what is the measure of angle one in the rectangle? Okay, so as we mentioned, all parts of the diagonals are the same. So this creates an isosceles triangle right here. This helps. So if this is 34, this is 34. And 34 plus 34 is 68. The interangle sum for a triangle is 180. So subtract the 68 and we get 112. So this angle right here is 112. We know that any straight line, okay, forms a linear pair, which together these two are 180 degrees. So 180 minus 112 is 68. Okay, so measure of angle 1 is 68 degrees. On the back side, it says that we have rectangle JKLM. So if JLM is 2x plus 4 algebraically, JLM is right here. So this is 2x plus 4. And then JLK is 7x plus 5. J, trace it, L, K. This angle right here, 7x plus 5. Well, given these two angles right in the corner of a rectangle, we know that they should add up to 90 degrees. So I'm going to take 2x plus 4 and add it to 7x plus 5, and set that equal to 90. Combining like terms, 2x and 7x is 9x. 4 and 5 is 9, equals 90. To solve for x, we need to subtract 9, divide by 9. 81 divided by 9. Why? 9's all over. x is equal to 9. And then last, we're looking at JP and MK. So up in the picture, JP, let's do that in blue, JP right here, and MK the whole, okay? Well, if I had two JPs, so that would be this side, that would give me one whole diagonal. And the diagonals are congruent. So we know that 2 times JP equals MK. So plug in the value or the algebraic expression for JP would be 2 times 3Y minus 5 equals 5Y plus 1. Distribute or multiply 3Y minus 5, so double both of those. We get 6Y minus 10 equals 5y plus 1. Combine the y's. I'm going to combine by subtracting 5y. Cancel those. Add the 10 over. 
cancel those. 5y minus y is y. And then 1 plus 10 is 11. So y is equal to 11.